Hey, welcome back. Let's talk about Starship today. One of the most crucial criteria for Starship is reusability. A typical Mars trip for a Starship rocket would look like this. Starship lifts off from the Earth with the help of a super heavy booster, which then comes back to Earth. Starship will then pair up with another Starship in Earth orbit to refuel before continuing its trip to Mars. Starship will then land on Mars by itself for the mission, produce methane fuel on the surface of Mars, and make the return trip to Earth. The spacecraft, once in Earth atmosphere, will land by itself again. With the help of Starbase's giant Mechazilla arm, Starship will be stacked on top of a booster for the next trip. As you can see, the fact that Starship can land by itself is kind of a big deal in the whole equation. Additionally, there will be a communication blackout of several minutes once the spacecraft arrives at Mars hands hindering all communication commands from Starbase. Therefore, Starship will rely on its own computer inside to perform the operations. So how hard is it to land Starship? This video is supported by Curiosity Stream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nabula, a streaming award nominated service when you sign up for Curiosity Stream at the link down below. Elon Musk planned to have as many as three launches per day and SpaceX to produce up to 1,000 Starship in order to actualize the goal of colonizing Mars. With the sole successful test of SN15, where the Starship achieved a soft landing after belly flopping itself mid air in a 33,000 feet high altitude test, SpaceX has proven that Starship can handle landing by itself. Such a maneuver is unprecedented in history, but it is crucial to the mission success of colonizing Mars. So, how did we land in the past? To understand why SpaceX is approaching landing in such a way, we have to understand how the space shuttle traditionally landed. NASA defines supersonic speed in Mach numbers from 10 to 25. Ordinary space shuttle in history return to Earth using aerodynamic drag to slow their re-entry. Once the re-entry is successful, the shuttle orbiter would be able to fly like an airplane. The wings are also designed to keep airflow attached to them therefore providing lift as the shuttle coasts and slides into the landing coordinates. The shuttle needed the help of parachutes to make a safe landing. Starship will be fully reusable and hence, SpaceX attempted to land the whole rocket. We have seen how SpaceX managed to land Falcon 9 boosters multiple times. However, the booster doesn't go into orbit. Landing the booster is easier because it is ejected two minutes after launch and returned to Earth from a relatively low altitude, reaching about Mach 6. Landing Starship will be a much more difficult task as it travels faster and enters the Earth atmosphere at Mach 25. From the SN15 test launch, we can see that Starship switched off its engines, performed a belly flop, and free fall horizontally at about 12 kilometers up in the air, which is an equivalent distance of the last half of a return back from orbit. The spacecraft then activated its active control with the four flaps to glide and coast mid-air, reignited its engines to righting itself to a vertical position before achieving a soft touchdown. With the SN8 test resulted in a crash, we can see that SpaceX was able to control a belly flip. With the SN15 test, in addition, SpaceX showed that the landing speed was under control and it was the main cause for the explosion of SN8. To break it down, the four flaps act pretty much like the shuttle's wings or how a skydiver would do to maintain control of the freefall. SpaceX wanted to aerobrake the spacecraft and coast it into wherever they were going to make the landing. In addition, Starship will most definitely enter the atmosphere super fast at Mach 25. At this speed, coming straight in with this kind of a massive vehicle is disastrous. By turning the spacecraft horizontally, it uses the massive surface area to reduce the velocity, increases air resistance, and also allows the flaps to drive the rocket's direction. With the successful land of SN15, SpaceX is only halfway through the journey as landing on Mars will be much more difficult. The atmosphere on Mars is 100 times thinner and Starship won't be able to slow down as it can on Earth. Most likely, Starship will plunder onto Mars at 4.5 miles per second. Aboard Starship is a substantial heat shield made up of hexagonal tiles which can withstand 25,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It can dissipate 99% of the energy and protect the cargo and all essential parts for landing. So what about the passenger experiences? For now, SpaceX will likely fly Starship on crude. 
but imagine what a ride it would be for anyone on board if that was to take place on a manned mission. According to experts, it definitely won't be like a typical airplane flight, but more of a bit of a roller coaster experience. One of the major concerns is how many Gs from the flip that passengers are going to experience. From the SM15 video, we can see that Starship rotates more or less around the nose cone. Therefore, most of the rotations are happening near the engines because of how Starship uses its flaps. Flightclub.io has done the modeling to find out the Gs that the passengers are experiencing is about 2 to 2.5 or so, which is manageable in a short time. In terms of the flip maneuver, it depends on where the passengers are sitting in relation to the center of gravity and center of pressure. Those will determine how much force one will experience. In this case, SpaceX will likely design the spacecraft in a way that the axis of rotation is very close to where the passengers are going to be. Landing Starship is an incredible feat of engineering and SpaceX is approaching the design as efficiently, economically, and humanly viable as possible. Elon Musk updated the timeline for the company's first orbital flight through a tweet, saying that it could come as early as May. For now, the FAA still need to work on some more key environmental assessments. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Now that we've figured out how to land a Starship, what happens next? Landing Starship is just the first piece of the puzzle. The movie The Martian shared to the popular culture how hard it is to live on Mars. Nevertheless, it only gives us a glimpse of what challenges lie ahead of us once we set foot on Mars. If you want to see more content like this, you should check out my streaming service, Nebula. Nebula is my go-to streaming service built and owned by creators like myself, Tech Arta, Real Engineering, Polymatter, and many others. It's a platform without advertisement, so you just watch stuff you want without any interruptions and it allow us creators to make good content for you. Nebula includes hour long high quality documentaries from your favorite creators. And since CuriosityStream likes to support independent creators, Nebula has teamed up with CuriosityStream and you can get Nebula for free when you sign up to CuriosityStream with a link in the description down below. If you haven't heard of CuriosityStream yet, it's a platform that has a huge collection of big budget non-fiction videos. For example, knowing the terrible conditions on Mars, how are we going to survive the harsh planet temperatures, toxic dirts, and high radiation levels that Mars is known for? How do we manage our necessities such as food, water, and shelter? Check out Becoming Martian on CuriosityStream to see an attempt to answer the question of Mars survival. Go to curiositystream.com slash Curious Elephant to get a full year of access to CuriosityStream for less than $15 today.